Thank you very much for joining this uh, online workshop on the future of medical data sharing in clinical neuroscience. My name is Mélanie Leroy. I'm working within the Lille Hospital in France on the use of medical data uh, for research purposes. And I will present the Medical Informatics Platform Federation in Dementia. The Medical Informatics Platform, that I will later call MIP, is federating data from electronic health records and records. Electronic health records are from two memory clinics, one in France, in Lille, where actually I work, and one in Switzerland, in Lausanne. They are real-world data from upcoming patients in the clinic. The MIP also has data from cohorts, one from Brescia in Italy, but also open access data sets like ADNI, Alzheimer's Disease Neuro Imaging Initiative, EDSD, European DTI Study on Dementia, and PPMI, Parkinson's Progressive Marker Initiative. There are also real-world data, but only on selected patients and intuition criteria have been used. Thanks to the MIP Dementia, we can run federated analysis at the same time on all the datasets or on a selected um, amount of datasets. I would like to give you a few key figures about the MIP dementia. As I said, it federates six datasets. ADNI contributes with more than a thousand patients, so does Brescia, Lille, and Lausanne datasets. EDSD and PPMI cohorts have a fewer patients. In total, we reached the number of uh, 6,348 patients. Sorry. Most of them uh, were my cognitive impairment patients or cognitively normal patients. We also have more than a thousand patients with Alzheimer's disease dementia. We also included patients with other diagnoses. The MIP dementia has 177 uh, variables included. Most of them are on the brain anatomy, but we also have variables on diagnosis, some psychometric scales, and some data on the demographic. Dementia also had 17 algorithms built in. I will not uh, get into too much detail about uh, the um, list of algorithms that you can see on the slide, but I will show you an example of how we used them. The creation of the MIP dementia required a lot of work. It started with the selection of data. Each center uh, created a list of available variables uh, located within uh, its own database or uh, available in other databases uh, within the hospital. We had clinical data integration, data selection, and technical requirements meetings um, where we all share our data or available list of uh, or list of available data, sorry, and we discuss uh, what we were interested in, what we had in common, what will be easier to uh, share in the first time on the pilot uh, study, and uh, we created the common data element file which uh, summarized all the data that are uh, located within the MIP. So each center created its own data set based on the common data element list. So um, it uh, extracts the data from its local database and maybe added uh, other um, data from other database within the hospital. For example, brain uh, segmentation and add um, a first version of the file of the arm of the datasets file for the MIP. And each center also has to work uh, on the harmonization of the file which was uh, also a lot of uh, discussion and um, comparison and to be sure that we are uh, using the same term and the same word of the same meaning in every center. So at the end, we managed to have an harmonized file. While we were discussing about the data we wanted to integrate within the MIP, we also worked on the installation of the tool we had two options, install it on an eBrain server or within our local network. Both are uh, equally protected. Only hospital personnel have access to the eBrain server dedicated to the MIP. 
So once the data had been harmonized and the MIP installed, the technical team from Switzerland and Greece incorporated the data in the MIP. I am presenting the overall process quite rapidly, but you can get more details from Erika Borsell and Les Abunawa's presentation tomorrow morning during the MIP ends and parallel stations. In order to prevent any identification of the patients, we did not integrate directly identifiable information, such as names, of course, or a full date of birth or full date of visits within the clinic. And uh, no, uh, analytic, uh, no analysis can be run with less than 12 cases. The MIP uh, only allows aggregate results. We cannot look at one specific patient data. If you would like more information, Erika Borsell is presenting the ethics requirement for the MIP usage at 9.30 on the parallel stations today. Another information aspect of the MIP are the legal agreements. Each center has to sign an installation and a data sharing agreement. And if, like us, you choose the installation on an eBrain server, you need to sign also a data transfer agreement. Once all of those steps are uh, completed, you have access to the platform that looks like this. You can uh, run descriptive statistics uh, and uh, use the 17 algorithm that have already been integrated within the MIP. If you want to try it out or if you want to see how it works, please join the end on session that I will be hosting tomorrow at 10.45. After this quick overview, I would like to give you more information on what you can find in the MIP dementia. Like I said, we had uh, more than 6,000 patients with a mean age of 66 and a 50-50 sex ratio. The population have a mean MMSC, a mini mental state examination, which is a global cognitive scale, of 25 out of uh, 30, but the data is not available for every case. As you may know, Alzheimer's pathology is due to the co-occurrence of both amyloid and tau pathologies. We have um, 756 cases with an ongoing amyloid pathology, a little bit less than uh, 700 uh, cases with an ongoing tau pathology, and uh, more than uh, 500 patients who have both pathologies. Since the lumbar puncture for cerebrospinal fluid biomarkers is only recommended in clinical practice to patients with a cognitive impairment, and is often an option sub-studies in cohorts, those data are missing for quite a number of patients. However, due to the large amount of patients initially included, the count of cases remain quite high. We perform several analyses using the MIP dementia, mostly on how to distinguish Alzheimer's disease, mild cognitive impairment, and cognitively normal patients. Actually, my goal here is not to fully answer that question, but to show how the MIP uh, can contribute. So I will first talk about the work that have been published by the Italian team in Brescia. You can use the QR code to quickly access the editor website if needed. The author included more than 1,200 patients and used a gradient boosting algorithm, an algorithm similar to a decision tree. It helps to find what features are the most and the least informative between groups. They actually found that EBITDA42, a CSF biomarkers for amyloid pathology, and total tau and phosphotau, both TSF biomarkers for tau pathology, as their name suggested, and the MMSC, the Global Cognitive Scale I just mentioned earlier, are the most contributive. However, however the MRI brain volume, such as left hippocampus, who has a key role in memory, the left amygdala and the fourth ventricle were the less contributed. Those results helps to focus our future work. The author also used an agnostic approach with an unsupervised algorithm. We uh, classically focused on AD, MCIs, and CN groups because they match our clinical diagnostic of Alzheimer's, mild cognitive and cognitive normal patients. But we can wonder if there are more than three groups. Using the categorization, clustering, and classification algorithm, the author showed that, that actually the model can find five distinct classes. The graph here showed the distribution of the value for each variable, 
and we indeed find a very low overlap between groups uh, across all the variables. The shift at the right hand of the graph is uh, due to the fact that the variable considerated are higher in AD patients, while the rest of the variable, such as brain volume, are smaller in this population. We kept this unsupervised approach in a study room that article is in preparation. We included patients with CSF biomarkers and MMEC, as well as MRI volumes, reaching uh, more than uh, 800 cases. We were wondering if we asked the model to generate three groups, if they will actually have a clinical meaning. The algorithm required that the data were standardized in order to give the same weight to every one of them, otherwise the data with a wider range will have a higher weight. This is why we use uh, Z-scores. We found that one group um, had uh, the lower left anterior volume, LEV, the lower MMAC, and the lower EBITDA 42 over uh, P tau ratio, suggesting that it might be AD cases. We also found consistent with you results with the black cluster, since it had the higher brain volume, the higher MMAC, and the higher ratio suggesting that it might be a uh, cognitively normal patients. The unsupervised algorithms that um, are very useful for exploring data, but in the medical field, we tend to use supervised algorithms. Indeed, one of the limitations of this method is due to the fact that I can't verify if my match between clusters and diagnosis are correct. There only remain possibilities. This is the reason why we use a supervised approach with the naive based algorithm. It allows us to compare the prediction with the actual clinical diagnosis. The confusion matrix on the left represents how the prediction of EBITDA 42, PTO, MMAC, and left intravenal volume performed. We have the real diagnosis on the bottom, uh, and the, on the left, we have the prediction. The higher the, the diagonal sorry, from bottom left to the top right, the better. We can see that no AD patient had been uh, predicted as uh, cognitively normal, but 37 cognitively normal patients have been predicted as MCIs. We found a global accuracy of 77%, the accuracy being higher for AD patients than MCIs, as shown on the work curve on the right. Probably because MCI patients have a very different um, etiology, some being progressive toward AD maybe, or even another dementia, other being stable. All the results that I have shown have a limitation, most of them due to clinical consideration and the heterogeneity of the population within a single group, especially the uh, my cognitive impairment patients. But again, my goal here is to show uh, what can be done using the MIP. I uh, show machine learning algorithm, but you can also run t-tests to compare two groups or ANOVA if you are uh, more than two. We had similar results with the Python script on local data. However, the MIP allows a quicker result since the scripts are already written and the legal documentation is uh, already been signed. No need to do a new one for every new research. The mid dementia are threats, such as the great number of cases, the viability of centers, avoiding recruitment bias, and so on. I didn't mention it, but of course, our result had some limitation, mostly due to clinical aspects, such as the heterogeneity of the population within the, the MCI group, for example. I showed several machine learning algorithms, but there are others. Maybe the other federation will present them in their talk, since we are sharing uh, the same set of algorithms. But you can also easily access t-tests if you want to compare two groups, or ANOVA if you have uh, more than two. As uh, Professor Riblin showed, we also have logistic regression. And in last, I would like to talk about something that I did not show, but that is also important. So the descriptive statistics tab. Um, it allows researchers to have an overview of the data and to better comprehend the data used in the algorithm. It also helps us uh, its interpretations. 
Even if a lot of work has been already done up to this point, we are still willing to improve the tool by adding new centers to the Federation. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to Professor Rivla if you're interested to join in. But we also would like to add new variables, new patients, as well as longitudinal data, since we are working on a neurogenerative disease. Since we've conducted several methodological validations, we now would like to move forward and to work on more scientific questions. All the slides that I've presented are the work of an overall team from the institution to the cognitive departments uh, to the court coordinators uh, and to the universities that help build or are still improving the MIP to the research infrastructure. I would like to thank the Human Brain Project um, Education Program that organized this workshop. Thank you very much for your attention. Please don't hesitate to ask questions on the chat or on the Q&A.